Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. It's time for us to check out the pages of our national dailies. So we call it Off the Press. Jide Johnson is on standby. He joins us. Jide, good morning and thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning to you and good morning to Kofi and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you very much for, for having me. All right, then let's start with uh, the leadership newspaper. And we have all the papers this morning. But, of course, we'll be looking at the leadership. Uh, please say no imminent threat in Abuja, reassures resident. That's boldly written amid fresh terror alert by Canada, Australia. So there's a fresh alert. Despite, you know, that that came from the United Kingdom and the United States. Okay, uh, three days after United Kingdom issues second warning, Jabi shopping mall short FCTA deploy 60 operational vehicles to secure agencies. I mean, those who live in the FCT will know about, you know, this very popular more. Tunubu APC set criteria for cabinet and key appointment. That's boldly written ahead of the elections in 2023. We will stabilize Nigeria's democracy with next year's elections, President Muhammad Buhari is saying. Week is meeting with Umahi Ayade Piazu in Rivers Razor's eyebrow. And uh, you find Chidima withdraw 5.5 million naira from Ataga's account after his death. That's what a witness is saying. Uh, if you remember the story of, uh, you know, maybe a lover and uh, who lost his life in the course of all of that. But that's it. This morning on the leadership, we turn our attention to the nation. On the nation, terror alert parties in fix over call to halt campaigns. United Kingdom cautioned citizens against traveling to Abuja. Akinyemi NSA should warn politicians we won't stop our rally, says Labour Party. APC, PDP, we're studying situation. <laughs> That's fine. Oyetola, Makinde kickoff reconstruction of Oshogbo, Iwo Ibadan Road. And uh, you find the NMPC L, Diwo Group sign MOU on Kaduna Refinery. I can't wait to hear GD's thoughts on this. Flood claims will be over. One trillion naira says insurance. Uh, that's what it is. And just before we move away, you find $1.5 billion Lekki Deep Sea Port ready for test run. These are some of the headlines on uh, the nation. We'll quickly turn our attention to the punch. On the punch, terror alert. Federal government detains 35 suspected ESWAP fighters. Tension heightens. United Kingdom issues fresh alerts. IG raises emergency phone numbers. Uh, calls for vigilance. FCTA demolishes shanties, Jabi Mall shot, other facilities tighten security. Air Force to take delivery of additional fighter helicopters in December, CSA's quarter to say. Federal government opens talks with investors on Lagos Calabar Rail. <laughs> really? And you, you still have the uh, Calabar to road, which is a federal government road that is not... Why? Okay. Airlines suspend 192 billion naira or billion dollars on Jet A1 reports. You're wrong, Tunubu, not selfish. Onanuga replies, Akin Toyi. Uh, you have threatens 1.9 trillion CBN agriculture scheme. Uh, that's also very saddening. And Lagos recruits 423 firemen, boost firefighting capacity. Quite commendable on papers, if you ask me. Lagos Delta Cross River presents 2.58 trillion naira budgets. And you begin to ask, what's the level of implementation with the previous budget? Of course, Rivers State. Uh, Rivers is not even here, but that's it. That's the much we can take this morning on the punch. We'll quickly turn our attention to the Daily Sun newspaper. Abuja, United Kingdom. Issues stay of alert to nationals and FCT tightens security. Security operative shots more. 
That's uh, the rider underneath the bold caption. Anxiety heightens as Omae Ayade Puyazu meets Wike. Ekwere Madu consent. Nigerians ask UK to release ex deputy uh, Senate president wife from custody. So we're talking about the Ike Kuramadu's saga. Consent Nigerians are asking the United Kingdom to release ex deputy Senate president and his wife from custody. But you know, these things don't work like that. 2023 EFCC teams up with INEC to end vote buying. They are very strong and big on that. Varsity bands, spaghetti gowns, nose rings, tattoos, among others. It reminds me of my day back in school. Flood, Lagos donates 5 or 50 million naira to Bielsa as federal government hands relieve materials to IDPs in River State. And you see, one question the Nigerians have asked is really, is it, is it possible to have these relief materials donated directly to uh, the people who are affected without going through the hands of government. And that's a trust issue. Okay. Shonwo Lu Okowa Ayade presents 1.692 trillion naira budget, 561.8 billion naira, 330 billion 2023 budget estimate. And that's on page three. Uh, Buhari meets Nigerians in South Korea, reiterates commitment to deepening democracy crazy and nigeria will regain position as pride of africa says ob sounds very very great well that's on paper but that's so much we can take now we have gda johnson who joins us this morning uh, to share his thoughts on some of the papers gda it's good to have you join us uh, kofi is also here with me this morning gda johnson good morning to you thank you very much for your time all right so let's have you share your thoughts uh, the leadership talks about the fact that the police is saying no uh, imminent threats. Of course, uh, they are also assuring residents of uh, security and what have you. But we've also seen that the United Kingdom and the United States have asked their nationals to, you know, to evacuate. And we see some persons who are moving already. There's a video that made it you know, online yesterday. You see, the, the, what, the headline of the leadership is contradictory is in contradiction of what the punch has with FG detaining 35 suspected Israel fighters and tension items and the enchanted destroyed in Abuja. So the challenge we have is that we usually have conflicting um conflicting reports from different agencies of government working on providing security, protection of lives and assurances to people with respect to whether there's security threat or there's a security alert. Uh, if the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Western embassies in Abuja are raising issues concerning security alert, and then one of the biggest malls in Abuja, in Chabi, closed its doors to prospective um, customers, then you know something is really wrong somewhere. Besides that, you will recall that nothing has been done with respect to the Kuji prison uh, um, outbreak that happened with some prisoners on the run, particularly prisoners that are that are under terrorist allegations, that are facing terrorist allegations. So it is very, very clear, except we we are just playing to the gallery, the government is playing the ostrich, or the police is trying to to, to, to deceive itself that the security situation in Abuja Will things that have happened over the course of this year would be at this high level of security, 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 security alert. My, my, my take on this is that government needs to put it out in order and then the security agencies should, should, should work as a team and the police, the army and all other agencies that are involved should be speaking with one boy and we shouldn't be having contradictory points when it comes to the usual. When the American embassy is closing its embassy, the British embassy is closing its embassy, and then what do we expect? They are telling us that the situation of things is, 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 not, is, not, is not palatable. So as far as I'm concerned, there's the need for the federal government to come up with a comprehensive, integrated approach to addressing the concerns that have been raised with the security.
political institution in Abuja. And it's not peculiar to Abuja alone. If Abuja that has the seat of government, you have the president, you have the Senate president and the speaker, and then you have you have the chief justice of the federation, all residing and all of these offices are in Abuja. If where we have the seat of government and the paraphernalia of office at the federal level is under threat, then what happens to every other every other every other area, every other local government, every other seat of government in Nigeria? There's it cause for serious concern as far as I am concerned. All right, uh, Julie Johnson, we'll stay with the, the leadership on Friday. I had some interesting stories there. The president uh, quoted by the papers saying that uh, uh, he, he will stabilize uh, or his administration will stabilize democracy uh, in Nigeria with next year's election. Um, um, are, you, are you confident that uh, PMB can do that, looking at his track record well, as far as elections, well, as far as elections are concerned? It is people that are alive that can enjoy democracy. And it is people that are sustained, that cares about democracy. What, what the federal government should be much more concerned is about dealing with inflation and the attendant high cost of food prices that will definitely happen next year, which will be astronomical considering the effect of the flood that has affected a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of farmland. And the various security threats we have had that have stopped people from going to their farm, to farm. That should be the concern. But what I just think is a diversionary tactic. A diversionary tactic in the sense that to cover up for the failure of this present administration. That you know what? Things you have failed in stabilizing the economy. Things you have failed in doing ABC. Let us talk about 2023 election and then talk about how to stabilize democracy. There is no individual that can stabilize democracy. There is no, even the American democracy is not, is, 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 is not as stable as we think from the outside. If you check the 2016 election, the 2020 election, and issues surrounding the 2020 midterm election, or do you want to talk about Britain, where we have had three prime ministers in, in one year? So, I, for me, the president is just clinging to the gallery. He's using a diversionary tactic to take the attention of Nigerians away from the major issues. Who, 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 an ugly man does not think about whether to vote or not to vote. You can't deal with the issue of vote buying if you don't deal with the level of poverty in the society. If people are, 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 are comfortable, they are sustained, Nobody will come to give you money to, to, to come and vote for him or not to vote for, 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 for him. These are the issues the president should be interested in. And if you do be playing to the gallery telling us that what he wants to do is to stabilize democracy, does he have, power, does he have the power to stabilize democracy? Did they just... Where, even, no, 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 Messi, just wait. Where okay. we have a situation whereby some people are caught in, in Sokoto with PVC, um, with, with, with hundreds of PVC, and even the INEC chairman himself pointed out that there are bad eggs in, in INEC. Yeah, let's see, I'm listening. All right, uh, so uh, si let's look at the nation. On the nation, it talks about uh, the NNPCL and Dewu Group signing a memorandum of understanding on the Kaduna refinery, the president witnessed that, you know, agreement that was signed in South Korea. What are your thoughts, really? Well, the, 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 the most important thing is that we should just take steps, steps to regulate, steps to de-emphasize government involvement, and we should borrow in, in our oil and gas sector. We should take a leap to what Brazil has done with Petronas, Take a cue from what Saudi Arabia has done with Aramco. And then we learn about how to go about it. But the interesting thing is that when during the 2019 presidential election, one of the presidential candidates, the opposing presidential candidate, talked about the need for government to diversify the economy, government to divest its interest in, in the oil and gas sector and allow private 
question. It was really cold. But now, all of the policies that were raised at that particular point in time were the policies that federal government is embracing. However, I, I appreciate the government for taking this step. You know why? That they are not too proud to embrace the ideas that come from other, uh, from the opposition in making sure that this country is better and in making sure that um, the critical sector of our economy, the major foreign exchange, and now for Nigeria is, is, is well structured and well organized. That, that's my take. I think it's a step in the right direction, though a bit late, but know that it is better to be late than be late. All right, Jiray Jotsuda, uh, the Sun newspaper, I mean, I'm asking you this question because you are uh, in the, uh, the, the academic field, so I'm sure you'll be able to give us a better, better analysis than most. Um, varsity bands, spaghetti gown, nose ring, uh, tattoos, others. And uh, what the paper is saying, the, the Sun newspaper is saying, Daily Sun, is that River State uh, University has ba placed a ban on all forms of indecent dressing within the university premises. Uh, the order was uh, containing an internal memo from the institution's registrar to the Senate, to the president of the SUG, uh, Students Union Government, and all students, and was sickle to a memo presented by the Committee of Provosts and Deans, which was considered by the Senate at its 291st regular meeting held on Thursday, September 29, 2022. I have a copy of that letter, and I, I, I'm aware that uh, uh, some some ladies, some girls, students, female students led a protest uh, uh, who were detained. I don't know if, if they've been released. But they're talking about wearing a spaghetti gown by female students. I don't know what a spaghetti gown. Messi might help us. <laughs> uh, wearing of short, number two, wearing of short skirt above the knees by female students. Uh, number three, coloring of hair by both male and female students. Uh, Messi, your hair, I think it has a bit of color there. Number four, sagging of trousers by both male and female students. Five, wearing of earrings by male students and nose rings by female students. Uh, six, wearing of tattoos by both male and female students. Seven, wearing of ankle chain by female students. Uh, I never actually liked that. <laughs> Eight, wearing of long eyelashes by female students. I'm looking at Mercy to be sure if she... Uh... Number nine, wearing of gown slash blouse that exposes the navel... Oh, that's uncomfortable. Uh, or, hmm, or breast by female students. I don't know if that's up to say at this time. Number 10, wearing of tattered jeans by trousers, jean trousers by both male and female students. And 11, wearing of bath bathroom slippers, rather, or bone shorts. I think it's bomb shot. Is it bomb shot or bomb? Bomb or shot. Bomb shot to the classroom. I didn't know students wear bomb shots at the classroom. Uh, Jenny Johnson, over to you, please. They should be concerned about how to provide basic infrastructure that are needed to equip the student mentally. Yeah, our emphasis has always been on the moral of, 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 of these kids. And the question you ask is, all of this litany of um, um, items they listed that students shouldn't wear, the question you ask is, is it what the student wear that makes them, or is it what they have upstairs? And um, we are not talking about providing internet in our in our in our various institution. We are not talking about um, providing smart boards, ensuring that the classrooms that we are teaching our students are contemporary classrooms that our students can compete with other students globally. Because we are in a global world, whereby anybody can apply for any job anywhere. As far as I'm concerned, my view concerning this dress, what have you? It is a bit different from majority opinion. I share matter minority minority opinion in the sense that um, it's called the university. Let the student learn what it means to live in a larger life. It's, it's, it's an institution whereby you learn to take decisions for yourself. I ask you this question: um, How many institutions do you think who look at a Western university that will stop students from having? No ring from having here, yeah, from having what having. Mean. If you have students that are that are in that are in popular culture, so you stop them from from doing all of that. I just think that in most cases, people make people making this lot are far away from reality. There, there is usually there is usually an overreach. There is no doubt that there, should, there must be some measure of decency 
However, we always have an overreach within the institution with people that share conservative view trying to impose their religious and cultural values on what the university is meant for you to be in the universe. It is, it is, it is, it is meant to let you understand that you take consequences for all of your actions. No, nobody, no, nobody waits you up to go for your lecture. You have to go. You know when to go for your lecture. If you like, you don't go. If you like, you go. At the end of the semester, you get to know the result of, 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 of your action. So as far as I'm concerned, I usually see schools having an overreach. What, let me ask you, what's the big deal? What's the big deal in having an uncle chain? <laughs> what 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 is the big deal? What's the big deal in wearing a skirt that is close to the knee? Or oh, wearing a bomb shirt to uh, class? What's the big deal uh, there as well, so, right? Listen, I'll tell you this. In while I was in Unilad, I had that was in the nineties. I had a colleague. She wore bomb shorts throughout. That was in the nineties. Throughout, as in fact, you always see her in short sneakers. She, if if you ask anybody that was in mass comp department in the in, in the nineties in New York, early nineties, she would tell you. Gideon so, Johnson, you, you seem to remember remember her her so well. It, yeah, you know you know you know the interesting <laughs> thing. There were students that were wearing slippers while we were in New York then. That they would just put they would wear jeans with their slippers. And they will put their note at their back pocket. In fact, most engineering students wear jeans and they put their note in their back pocket. They don't even have time for fashion and the rest of it. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's an overreach. That's just that's just what I that's what I, that's what I think. An attempt to control the younger generation. Let look. I, let me tell you this on a personal note. When my son finished secondary school. He said he wanted to play this year. And I said, you want to play this year? I said, well, as long as you are bold enough to take this year to church, as long as you are bold enough to put this year in the neighborhood. So the guy caught, played that this year. I took him to church on Sunday. People were asking questions. I said, yeah, he said he wanted to play this year. And after a while, he was just not interested in playing this year. Every one of us usually were rebellious at that thing. We resisted every attempt of control. So when we were doing Brother Johnson, when we were wearing baggy, 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 baggy shoes, when students started using um, weave on and all the rest, like I told my student yesterday, if you have weave on or you do this dreadlock or what have you, you are going to hell 40 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> yes or no? Even, even, but, even but punk. It, even punk, and, you know. <laughs> and so, if you wear punk, if you wear, if you if you put on weave on, or you put on a wig, or what have you, the knowledge and the thinking 30 years ago, the society was totally against it. Now, today, everybody is wearing wig. Anybody can cut punk. Even ladies can cut their hair. 30 years ago, if you cut your hair as a lady, it's not fashionable. It is not acceptable. Even women in the workplaces are cutting their hair now. Should yes. this be the focus of, 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 of our education? The focus is for us to look at our curriculum. The focus is for us to provide infrastructure. The focus is for us to equip, to train our lecturers to be contemporary in their thinking and in their approach and in teaching our students to compete with students globally. But Jire Johnson, where, where do we draw the line? I mean, yes, indeed, you said 30 years ago it should... You know, to do some things, so even to wear jeans in some places, to wear jeans, uh, you'll be you'll be branded a, a, a worldly person. Uh, remember, if you if you cut the uh, what we call sakura or gorimakpa, gorimakpa yeah, of those exactly. days, you will be termed an armed robber. They say only armed robbers, exactly. but gorimakpa, <laughs> gorimakpa. <laughs> but um, you know, Johnson, is is there and um, shouldn't there be a line? Because part of what they've written here is, now, you know, ladies should now, not wear now, did, tops did, did, above showing their navel, their navel. You know, as a, as, a, as, a, as a lecturer, how will you cope? You know, um, nah. how will you cope? Do you have students, no. Johnson, who dress like this? How do you cope? 
you know, if a, a people, female, yes. People, oh. listen, you don't have to see the level. We don't, size is not a function of the eye, it's a function of the mind. Somebody can dress fully in your presence and you undress the present. Yes or no? Are you asking me? And you undress the person in your mind. So as far as I'm concerned, how would you say when in those eras, in those days, when ladies used to wear leku, <laughs> when they used to wear beads, <laughs> when they used to tie, you know, young ladies usually wear cats and tie wrapper above their knees. <laughs> Jide Johnson, I, th I think we need to move now <laughs> because we, 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 we will never but, but, you know, but, get but, over but, this. But Jide Johnson, you, you seem to remember the, your, your fellow student who wore the bomb shot more uh, quite well. I need no. You, no, you seem to I, 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 Shall I shock you? <laughs> Go shall on, I shock you? Yes, yes. Now, now, you see, people tend to judge by appearance. I agree, appearance shows the manner, but to a certain degree. And to a certain extent, I'm not saying we shouldn't have some measure of um, 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 some measure of decency. However, don't go to the extreme. Also, give these students the opportunity and the freedom to express themselves, to find expression. Let them come to the realization of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, what is the norm and what is not the norm. All right, Jide Johnson, yeah. quickly, we're about to move away. Uh, your point has been made already as regards uh, how, what should be, a, should be the priority, especially, you know, at a time where our educational structure and the curriculum and everything, you know, is begging for help. Uh, that has also been registered. But quickly, before we move away, uh, ahead of 2023 elections, you have the EFCC saying they're teaming up with INEC to end vote buying. Do you think that it's, this makes any sense in terms of teaming up? E is this not a function? Yes, um, e it should be much more concerned about what is happening to Nigerian deposit in various banks, whereby people's money are being assessed without their authorization. That's economic and financial crime. Yes, it should be concerned with preventing public funds from being stolen. We still have the case of the Accountant General of the Federation pending. We have the minor gate issue. We have so many issues of corruption in government that requires ESCC attention. Than for ESCC to be running after vote buying and the ESCC, you see, they should focus on major issues and leave the mundane issues. If the police and INEC and the NCDC cannot address this basic issue of preventing vote buying. So that should be the focus of EFCC. How many personnel do they have? How many, how many wards do they want to get to? How many polling units do they want to get to? Now, you're only dealing, <coughs> you're only dealing with... <coughs> Sorry, maybe you need to take... Uh, with, with the end people. Who are those financing vote buying? Who are those? You know, all the vote buying we have seen, have they prosecuted one? Well, mercy. You see, when people just want to justify their budget, their budget ed, and how they are spending their budget, they come up with different type of statements. So don't you think that the SDP will vote money to prevent vote buying? Mm. They will vote, the money will be voted. Budgetary allocations will be made concerning that in 2023 budget. And I ask you, and I tell you, what will be the outcome of um, their, their effort? Will it stop or prevent vote buying? Were they able to stop vote buying for the presidential? Even a close one that was done within their notice uh, concerning the presidential primaries, where dollars and nairas were being exchanged. Were they able to do anything? I'm asking you. But they were, search, they were searching bags. They, you know, they stopped oh, some people well, moving around. Yes. Oh, Ghana was no bags. money did not exchange that, that week. <laughs> but, but, and but, that's the reason that's the reason why the majority of the parties are not embarked on serious campaign. You know why? They wasted a lot of money during the primaries. So that's why they've not engaged in a serious campaign. Mm. All right, Jude Johnson, we, we have to um uh, move on. Um, we'll look at uh, one more story. Do we have time for that? Yes, indeed. And then before we 
we go. But I think you've said it all, uh, that the line of decency has been crossed. Uh, my mind is still on the other, the other situation. Let's look quickly at another headline uh, coming uh, from uh, the, 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 the Sun, the Sun newspaper. And, of course, the Aquarium model situation is still very much, very much in focus. Some Nigerians have forgotten, but uh, uh, this is what the, the, the Sun is saying, the Daily Sun is saying. Concerned Nigerians are asking the United Kingdom to release the ex-Deputy Senate President and wife from custody. I do not know uh, if we have time to look at who these concerned Nigerians are. But are you one of those, DJ Johnson, who will join the, uh, to ask the UK, uh, maybe Rishi Sunak, who is the new PM, to release Akwere Madu and his wife unconditionally from custody? Now, the, 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 the British Right, I think we have lost a connection with Jerry Johnson. Um, hopefully, we can get him back before long. But Mercy, this is a, a story that many have moved on from. You know, the initial frenzy that tweeted it uh, died down a bit because of um, the fact that the case is moving slowly. But we, the man is still in, in, in prison custody. Uh, and um, it seems that uh, his initial alibi or, or excuse or explanation uh, checked out. The boy was not a minor as the... He came to so, be. so, so, I want us. I want us to come home about this scenario. So we have a similar scenario with okay. that, and that's of Namdi Kanu. We understand that over time, there's been a lot of verdict. There's been a lot of judgment that's been given. Hey, release Namdi Kanu. Uh, the United States, or you know, the international community has lent their voice. Did the Nigerian government obey? Now, this is a, a case where. Um, you know, this is this is in a case where there's a lot of legality. M mercy, mercy. So, so I'm, when, I'm saying when, when people say you know the international community, no international community can tell a sovereign nation to act o overriding a court. Okay, it's, so, it's not so, done. So, so why would you know consent Nigerians? So, do consent Nigerians mm -hmm. have the right to ask? The United Kingdom to override the rulings of the Which, court. Which that's the a very, 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 very good question. So, so, so that's question. it. So I just wanted us good to question. come back to the scenario. <laughs> yeah, uh, bring it, it, it back good, home. It was a good way to pass your point. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good way to pass the point. Well, that's the much we can we take at this go. point in but time. But Messi, Messi, the, about the eyelashes thing. I mean, I'm not I wearing any eyelashes. I wonder how what are the lecturers <laughs> to go and measure with a measuring tape? Kofi, okay, can we move away? It's, it's too long. It's not long. Okay, this is two inches long. I don't know. How long what? is the longest eyelash? Mercy? I have no idea. I haven't thought about that. Well, Jimmy Johnson said, said even if you wear a, a short top revealing your navel, that he as a lecturer will not see it. I really don't know how except that works. But, you, but I remember... If, if you I, might be looking at it, but he won't see it, except you want to see it. So so I, I understand that this rules quickly, uh, maybe because you're still dragging this issue. I don't know for what reason. But I, I remember a time where I used to be in school and then it was a big issue, you know, wearing... So, so the school, don't forget that we live in a conserved society. Our culture is very conserved. And so you come from a home that's Christian or Islam. There's a lot of conservativity. So you have to be conserved. All of this. Uh, so going to school, it becomes almost difficult for me to wear a sleeveless dress. I, I, that, that's the culture. Because uh, over time it was out of, you know, it was banned that you don't have to dress in a certain way. No, 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 that. no. So that no. has become, Messi, you it's, know, it, it's like. It seems, it seems we, 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 you're a bit behind, you know, you've moved on too far. No, but. but, but, but but, but, but that's now. They don't even wear. So, so the thing is, don't even wear, as much as we know that we need to draw the line, just as he's mentioned, but there are things that are parity. So yesterday, I, I saw one of my friends who was sharing her thoughts about, you know, the way Nigerians act here and how it mm. is over the other part of the world. But so the point is, what's important? Is that really an issue? How does that affect anything? But that's it. Yes, this yes, morning indeed. on. Off you know, the Messi press. now they even mark. Um, I don't know why she said on air no bra day. You know, they don't. No, but that's a, deep, that's a misconception. And, and, and it's moved on no, from no, being... No, it's a misconception. It's, it's moved on from being one day now to being a regular thing. Where so if you look at 13th if, if of men, October, because 13th 13, 13 yeah. of October is uh, a, a concept when you talk about no bra. Oh, so you even know the day. Yes, I know. It's, it's a day for, it? uh, you know, going to check whether you have cancer. So that was, and that's, of that. the that's the essence. That's the okay, idea. Okay, but it's, okay. it's been misconstrued. There's misconception around the 13th of October. And so people just okay. make it... You know, just make, of it. Yes, more clear of it. Well, it's a well, health concern. Well, I'm, 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 I, t I hear, I hear from reliable sources. You know, I'm a, I'm a journalist. Um, that, we we that, need to really move on now. Wear, wear so this is, they this don't is the point where we have to move on. In really. the universities, I don't know. We have to go, Kofi. You, know, you should investigate, Messi. I also investigate some more. For real. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll come back shortly. <laughs> you know, with our first major conversation. Please stay with us. <laughs>